Let's bring in the panel for today, Ransted CEO Fred Vandertang, Aqualis Director Simon Bolton and Chandler McLeod's Peter Gleeson. And thank you to all of you. Uh, we've heard from Besser that there's that trend of, of slowing jobs growth in the economy. Uh, Peter, just from you, how do you think employers at the moment are reacting to what we're seeing in the global financial markets? Yeah, well, I think you, we've actually seen the reaction in the numbers in that uh, they're, they're trying to take away the risk of the fixed cost. They have a lot of permanent jobs gone. Uh, part-time jobs have taken over. Hours worked will be interesting because I'd suggest it won't have changed much. Uh, and uh, of course we need probably uh, in excess of 20,000 just to keep up with those people that are coming on the market in a job ready sense. So um, uh, it's not a good result but it reflects what we're seeing. Confidence is down. Then again there is a big lag time isn't there, um, isn't there Fred when you, when you have an employer decide they want to hire someone then go through that process. It can actually take many months to actually mm -hmm. then get that employer, employer's bum on, on the seat if you like. Yeah. So do you think we actually are uh, right now seeing the reaction to to the global financial markets well, or could that actually be to come? I think there are actually some signs already appearing in the past mm. months. We went, went through some jittery times already so employers were kind of shaky about their decisions whether to hire or not. Uh, we were also seeing a, a shift not only from full-time to part-time but also from permanent hires to temporary hires because of course in times of uh, loss of confidence employers do well in organizing themselves in a more flexible way. Mm. So temporary and contract roles uh, would be more interesting for them. It sounds like Simon that employers are almost better prepared for this time around than, than maybe last time? Could we say I that? I think you're right. I think there's even uh, perhaps over-preparedness. I think there's oh. sometimes these trends are longer term ones. You know, organisations with costs having been under pressure have had plans, HR plans, headcount plans that take time to put into place. So sometimes these things do look like a knee-jerk reaction and suddenly mm. somebody's ripped out 22,000 jobs. But that's a process that would have started three, four, even six months ago mm. as organisations start to look at how they plan their headcounts and how they manage their HR strategies. Fred, um, when, with the financial markets we're trying to work out what everyone is worried about. Um, on any given day we can find a headline, but what do you find employers in Australia are worried about? Well, it really depends on where you look. Of course, we, we all know that there are industries that are still pulling ahead and are hiring. Uh, in mining and resources, they're still continuing. There's no sign of a slowdown at all. But there are definitely industries in the whole financial sector, the banks, uh, the investment banks, the equity houses, they're definitely slowing down their hiring in the last weeks and months. Yeah, um, Peter, um, can I ask you about that as well? Yeah. Because we've seen offshore big announcements of, say, HSBC for one, mm -hmm. saying 10% of the workforce goes. Are we seeing a spillover effect into the financial sector here? Yeah, I think, I'm not sure we've actually seen a spillover from that sort of uh, reduction at this point but I think it's once bitten twice shy. Uh, the reality was that when the GFC arrived everyone was pretty fat. Okay. Uh, we're lean now and it's a matter of yeah, is there enough confidence to say really go for a, a as I say an ongoing mm. fixed cost mm. to your business model. So um, let's take little bites and uh, take it from there. Yeah. Well, that's Simon as well. Yeah, I think the overseas head offices are going to put Australian businesses you know, under pressure to reduce their costs. Um, Australian employees have become very expensive to global organisations, you know, with the Aussie dollar the way it has been. Mm. Um, and these large organisations like the banks, as you mentioned, you know, they're looking at cheaper ways to do things, quite frankly, mm. and putting functions offshore, um, putting things into India, put it, putting things to the Philippines, mm. is something that the banks have been doing for some time, and that's going to have some impact on the unemployment figures here as well. People will lose their jobs because the job is going to go to India. Yeah, OK, let's take a quick break away from that for a moment. We've got more analysis uh, coming up from Peter Gleeson, Simon Bolton and Fred Vandertang. But let's get an update on the share market because uh, Ben Lebrun's over at CMC Markets. And Ben, you've noticed actually a bit of a pickup in the share market since we saw the numbers come out. Uh, I think the share market's actually lost a bit of ground since, uh, since these figures have come out. Yeah, down 1%. So what have you seen then? Well, it's very interesting, isn't it, that the share market would uh, would pull back on these figures, uh, given that uh, obviously you now we're still looking at the RBA and looking, uh, expecting that uh, maybe they're going to keep rates on hold uh, on the back of this. Certainly, you, you would have to think that uh, a lot of the, the tightening bias that we have seen in recent months is, is certainly uh, slipping away from the RBA at this stage. And uh, I guess you'd have to start thinking that uh, the tools at their disposal to stimulate the economy, um, you know, well, one of them certainly the RBA, if, if they're going to loosen rates from here, I mean, that, that data would have to, uh, I guess, um, y you know, it, it would have to come into the equation now that, uh, that the RBA are going to start to loosen rates from here. It's it certainly, I mean, you, you've got to look at the trend uh, across these uh, these employment figures because, as you said yourself, and, and I've heard the other people say as well, that uh, the, the, the data is very, very erratic across the board, so you can't just isolate sort of one month's worth 
of data. Um, overall, I, I still think you know the, the, the health of the Australian economy is, is still very much uh, ticking along okay. Uh, as I said, you know the RBA can loosen rates if it needs to. Um, you know, the, the, having a look, comparing the Australian economy to, to the European markets and uh, and the US market is just crazy to do because because of the level of uh, public debt. I mean, you know, we've just got the, the the Labor Party want to try and bring the, the budget back into surplus, but of course, if things are to really fall away and it is started, to, if we are starting to feel it in the Australian economy, then uh, th then we can start to spend again at a government level. So, all, all things considered, Brooke, I, I don't think that uh, we can we can look at this piece of data and really start to price in worst case scenario. There are other signals, though, even from corporate Australia today. David Jones comes out to say that they've had a pretty bad fourth quarter actually for 2011, and in fact, the first quarter of 2012 isn't actually looking much better. No, that's true. Uh, but I mean, they're a high-end uh, discretionary retailer, and uh, I mean, you know, a, a lot of what we're seeing out of DJs, you can sort of blame. Uh, I, I guess you can look at the board and go, okay, you know, the online presence has only just picked up for DJs, but they've really dragged the chain compared to their uh, some of their competitors. And if you walk into a, 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 you know, one of their one of their stores, there's not a lot of cross-selling goes on. You don't realise that uh, DJs have got uh, such a big online presence at this stage. So uh, we actually went on to the 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 DJ's website just uh, just earlier and sort of compared prices. Uh, we, we did it against eBay and really across the board you can do 25% better in terms of prices on eBay than you can do at, uh, at DJ's and uh, overall you know consumers in the Australian market are still spending. Uh, it's just a lot harder to put a, a uh, I guess get a piece of data that uh, that, that will support that but uh, in terms of services they're spending at a services level. You would need to drill down into the GDP number to, to get a good Good read on uh, on the spending that Australians are doing over the internet, but I think that's obviously where that where they are doing it. In saying that, you know that DJ's result was was terrible. Look at compare it to something like Katmandu that we saw a couple of weeks ago. That that really shot the lights out. They're a retailer. They're not too far removed from uh, from, from DJ's in terms of uh, in terms of looking at apparel and and, and that sort of thing. So um, I, I still think that uh, the Australian economy is okay overall, Brooke, and we can't just take this. Uh, this piece of data, looking back at the um, obviously the, the employment data, and, and sort of start to you, you know fear worst case scenarios. Um, yeah, that, that's my opinion overall, Brooke. Absolutely, um, love having you on. Thank you very much, Ben. Appreciate it from Thanks, CMC Brooke. Markets Stockbroking, and just a market talk from Dow Jones Newswise, suggesting uh, when you look at the Australian dollar slump on the back of the numbers, the employment numbers, uh, that maybe the RBA hawks might be silenced by what we just saw today. Um, perhaps just as it adds to the picture of weakness in the non-mining sector of the economy, feeding caution among consumers, which we already know, we've seen it from David Jones, that is eroding retail profits, but perhaps a strong message to the markets from the Aussie dollar move that the RBA is less likely to be raising interest rates anytime soon. Uh, let's go back to my guest in the studio that, though today, Fred Van der Tang, Randstad CEO, Aqualis Director, uh, Simon Bolton and Chandler McLeod's Peter Gleeson. Uh, Simon, um, because the RBA is still talking about the mining investment boom down the track and that's been why it's had this bias to, to raise interest rates as opposed to cut, which everyone's talking about now. Do you still see those mining investment plans intact when you look at, say, the hiring intentions in that space? Well, I think there's no doubt that the demand and supply equations for uh, resources uh, is going to work in our favour. So the, um, yeah, I think that the mining boom is still there. I think that it is still putting demand on the labour market and skills are short, still short in some of the areas that the mining companies need people. So yeah, I think that that's going to be set to continue. And Peter, what about um, some uh, those businesses exposed to the mining sector? Are you seeing any kind of cooling off of um, the, the confidence, I guess, given, given the outlook that we've been talking about for them? Yeah, well, look, uh, frankly, the mining industry is very long term. I mean, the projects are underway now and hiring now have been probably in train for the last three to five yeah. years. So, so uh, we're actually seeing a gear up in a lot of those. There's certainly no uh, drop off investment in some of the major sites that we could see. So. And Fred, I, I guess uh, it's exposure to Asia. You're still seeing that kind of driving those employers' uh, hiring intentions? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I would echo what Peter and Simon are saying. And in fact, I think there's more at hand still because the, the salaries in that sector are still driving up the whole salary game as well so it's funny so on the one end we see a drop in employment at the moment mm. I think it's a shame that we drop uh, or that we go over that psychological hurdle of five percent mm. uh, but salaries over the last quarters have inched up uh, on a year-on-year -year comparison so there's still many many speeds uh, and I think that's why it's important for em employers not to lose their cool and still concentrate yeah. on, the, on the things are that those, really matter. Are those higher salaries actually
actually managing to entice employees? I, I guess maybe how are employees yeah. reacting to the, the financial markets at the moment? Yeah, well look, I think they still have the right on their side. Uh, the unemployment, let's face it, is still low. With five, it's still low. Uh, yeah, sure. So there's still a skill shortage. There's still a long-term shortage of uh, lots of skills in many sectors. Mm -hmm. So they still have the upper hand in terms of their negotiation position. Any significant change yeah, um, in employees? The, yeah? the, the point I'd make on the... Uh, we spoke in April about the candidate being king, still holding the, uh, the ace card. I think that's changed a bit. I think that um, okay. if you've got available skills and the numbers came out recently with postgraduate, 86% of people who completed postgraduate studies last year are employed and have improved their position. Uh, if you're skilled, you can still demand a significant, uh, probably, uh, I suppose, uh, increase on what the average in the marketplace is. But if you haven't upskilled and you are in the general workforce population, I'd say these numbers are actually something you've got to take on board in terms of thinking about what your value is in the marketplace. Mm. And uh, so great it point. could be an interesting change in dynamic. As yeah, well. great point. Simon, final thoughts from you about what you're seeing in the labour market, maybe what we can expect given this volatility for financial markets anyway and will probably go on for a while. I think costs are just going to be the focus, Brooke. Um, as, long cost, as long as costs are the focus, um, where's the biggest costs? Headcount. Easiest way to save costs? Get rid of people. So, you know, there's that very cost dynamic yeah. thing going to play itself out as well. So I think all the comments we've made around wage creep and around increasing the sort of numbers of people getting out of work, they've all got, it's these mixed messages that we're getting from all segments of the market, mm. including the labour market. You know, there are people hiring and there are people making redundancies, mm. you know, even in the same organisation. So th the messages are very, very confused and picking these figures every month, we always come on, <laughs> but you just cannot tell. We've stopped trying, haven't we? We've yeah. learned. Uh, Simon Bolton from Aqualis, thank you so much. Fred Van der Tang from Randstad and also Peter Gleeson, Executive General Manager for Recruitment, Chandler McLeod. Thanks guys so much. So that's the, the picture of the labour market as we sit here to see the unemployment rate jump up to 5.1%. As these guys pointed out, though, that's still very low. The Australian dollar has come off on the jobs data. And just to recheck the Australian share market, it has definitely improved since the numbers coming out. We are down now.